No, what I'm saying though, if we were dating yeah. for a certain amount of time, if we already had the marriage talk, and I and I talk to your family members, I get the ring, all that. I'm taking you out. They bring you to a spot, and I put it at the put it at the table. Like I think it's a video out. Someone did this, and I get down on bended knee and say, "Will you marry me?" You gotta get on two knees. Get the fuck. <laughs> All right, man. Welcome back, um, Tay Rosen Podcast. Twenty one questions. I got a special guest. I got a special guest. Um, I want to do like Shannon Sharp type intros. I ain't that cold yet. He be having like the blah, 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 crazy shit. So until I get there, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. <laughs> to the people. Let the people know who you are. Well, what's up? What's going on, you guys? This is girl no CK, the DJ, uh, mm-hmm. music publisher, producer, uh, creative DJ, entrepreneur, dancer. Keep going. Singer, model. Actress, honestly, whoever the fuck I want to be. Facts. That's what I. Am. I need some more shit under my. Can, can, can I, do I, what do I do? What, what do I do, bro? T- tell them what I do, bro. Okay. Um. Anyway. Talks to people like their kids. Talks to people like producer, podcaster. There we go. There we go. Entrepreneur, there we go. podcaster, boxer, twenty twenty three goalkeeper. goalkeeper. There we go. Landlord, <laughs> property owner. Huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. All right, man. So uh, we back with another episode of 21 Questions, of course. And you know, in the segment 21 Questions, you got 10 questions for me. I got 10 questions for you. The board op has a question to wrap it all up. Okay. And that's how we do it. So you want to go straight into it? Oh, we. Okay, what are the rules? Is the rules? There's absolutely no rules and it's very unfiltered. So it's like. All right. Can I curse? Can I kind of cursed in my intro, but can I curse? You. That's. Yeah. yeah. All definitely. right. Cool. Say that shit back. And some some wild shit might happen. Or you might get asked some super wild shit. Come on. Okay. So I do wild whatever. shit every day okay. as a DJ. Like okay. I'm just saying, I just let just you know because you. you asking, can you curse? I'm like, oh, you must not know how wild this shit really is. I don't. Asking, I'm, I'm like, saying I don't. <laughs> so I'm like, let me like get my For sure. get my shit together. But it's always ladies first though. So you got the first question. Okay, ladies first. So mm. 21 questions. Let's do it. With Terry. All right. Question number one. We're going to start nice and easy, okay? I don't like it like that, but let's do it. Oh, that tell me a lot about you. But uh, (laughs) (laughs) number one, what type of energy are you bringing into 2024? Uh, I think I'm bringing the same energy as the last three years. I've been pretty on point my last three. Not even pretty. I've been on point the last three years. So it's just, I'm just keeping the train going. Define what that is. What is that energy like? Um, consistency, intentionality, um, those, those are my main two things is really being intentional, um, and, uh, valuing time over everything else. Realizing that time is the most valuable resource. I agree. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've been on that like since 2020, really like mid 2020, I really got on my, like, I started this like win the morning campaign type model okay. thing. Okay. Well, like I get up early. And like I use two hours of solitude to take baby steps towards a goal before I interact with the rest of the world, so that way I can guarantee I have. Oh, that's interesting. A good day. I've heard of that, but I've never heard of it in that way. I know people yeah. that like wake up like early in the morning, maybe like six in the morning, something like that, and mm-hmm. they don't look at their phone when they wake up. Like they mm-hmm. hide their phone before they go to sleep, mm-hmm. so when they wake up, they just like they'll be up right, maybe mm-hmm. six o'clock, and then they'll set their alarm two hours later. So maybe eight o'clock, and then when that second alarm goes off, then that's when they go into their phone. But between those two hours, they're getting their, they're having their solitude. They're writing down what they want to do throughout the day, mm-hmm. not what everybody wants them to do throughout the day. So they mm-hmm. have it as a priority in their mind, and then they start picking up the phone and like go through that stuff. So it's similar. It's very similar to that. So my philosophy is like in life is like if you wake up every day just in time to go to work, like if you like a nine to five, you know what I'm saying? You wake up every t- every day just in time to go to work, your life, you kind of maintain it. You never going to like level up really. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you you wake up, you go to work, you deal with whatever happened at work. And then that kind of sets the tone for the rest of your day. If you had a horrible day at work, you're probably going to shut down for the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? That's Stuff true. like that. So for me, it's just like if I wake up hours before that and I'm able to, you know, 
uh, edit. I'm able to exercise. I'm able to eat something healthy. Make sure, you know what I'm saying, listen to an audio book while I'm doing all this stuff, while I'm editing, while I'm working out, whether I'm, whether I'm uh, cooking, eating, taking a shower, listening to these audio books every morning to give myself more information, all these things. Like, I know I'm taking baby steps mm -hmm. to be a better person. So mm -hmm. even if I walk out the house at 8 o'clock, I might get in a car accident and that shit fucked my whole day up. I still made progress today. So do you feel you like that helped you better manage time or have better time management? It helped me in every regard. Because I've been doing it for damn near four years now and like life is way different. You know what I'm saying? Like, How long did it take for you to feel that life is different though? Did it instantly happen or did it happen over time? It happened over, I'd say like... A year and a half, I could really, I really looked back and was like, damn, like, okay, shit is real different. And a lot of it is because of the audiobooks, though. Like, How a lot of be, it is because of the audiobooks. Yo, audiobooks really, like, I really started getting into audiobooks actually last year around mm -hmm. July. And when I, what I realized is, it's so much not, I mean, it's a book, of course. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of knowledge in these audiobooks that you don't really pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And it's actually knowledge coming in from everyday life mm. when you think about it, right? So it's like a couple of audiobooks I have like that what? I have like my top five right What's now. What's your top five? Okay, no order. Top five. Um, the Creative Act by Rick Rubin. I just started reading it. Yes. I don't like it yet. Oh, you're going to like it. Okay. You're going to like it. You got to, I don't know how far you're into it, but. Yeah, I'm like probably like four chapters in. I, had, I ain't going to lie. I kind of turned it off. As a, I ain't like it. Nah. I'm gonna do it. Do it while you're working out. Okay. That's one thing. That's one audiobook I listen to while I'm working out. So the creative act, the Rick Rubin. If you're creative, uh, no matter what industry you're in, mm -hmm. as a human, we're creatives. You create the world you live in. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like the emphasis of the book, but it just goes into detail. It kind of breaks everything down to a different, simple perspective that mm -hmm. I can appreciate, mm -hmm. right? Because as a DJ, you, like, you do that. Like You're running around as a, you know... As an entrepreneur and a podcaster and a media person, media personal personality, you running around doing all these things. Sometimes you forget to take in the world that adds to your creativity. For sure. It happens like yeah. a lot. So, creative act Rick Rubin, um, Neville Goddard, feeling is a secret. Okay. If you really want to understand manifestation and like, I'm a Christian, right? Okay. I love God. God loves me. If you really want to intertwine manifestation with the purpose God has for you in your life, feeling is a secret. Gotcha. It's like black and white, simple to understand, right. feeling a secret. Um, Pussy by, I think her name is Lisa. Oh, I, I don't remember her last name. I think her name is Lisa. But it actually talks about divine femininity mm. as a woman. I feel like in this day and age, we go through a lot of different things the world brings on us. And sometimes we forget to tap into our divine femininity or what it truly means to be feminine, mm -hmm. right? It's a woman, right? We all, each woman has their own definition. But when it gets down to the foundation of it, that book kind of brings you back to the foundation of it, mm -hmm. right? Um, the 21 Laws of Leadership. Okay. That is a book I literally just started today. And I really, really, really appreciate that book For because sure. when you start leveling up, you start hiring employees or you start working with team or you just start working with people in general, it kind of teaches you how to interact as a leader, but influential as well mm -hmm. to where like, you know, you want to make sure everybody's being built up around you and it's not just you. For sure. And I think the last one would be uh, the... It's, I think it's the laws of human nature. Was that by Robert Greene? Yes. I started reading a Robert Greene book today. Is it uh, goals? Nah, the artist seduction. The artist seduction. Yeah. Artist seduction. I started reading it. I didn't finish it. I like it. And I, I'm reading the unabridged 22 hour version. Oh, okay, okay. Like that. It's, it's crazy though. Like it's it, yeah, it's crazy. Like the yeah, the artist seduction is good too. Um, so yeah, and I have some more books in there that I'm reading, but shout out to that. All right. So my first question for you, and this is, I, don't, I ain't even gonna ask my real first question. What does, what is divine femininity? What is femininity to you? Okay. Divine femininity to me is, is tapping into the essence of who you are as a woman, right? 
the reason why I say who you are as a woman, because it's hard. It, you can't put a label on divine femininity as a, as a woman, you are a whole bunch of things. You're a creator, right? You create life, right? right? You're a nurturer, you're a mother, you know, empath at heart, right? At the same time, you're a badass bitch. That's mm-hmm. part of being a divine woman, a divine femininity. I feel like sometimes we think about feminine and we think about womanhood, but we see women who express and they fully live in their sexuality, mm-hmm. right? We see it as like, oh, she a oh. hoe. Oh, she fucking around. Oh, she doing this. Oh, she doing it right. Right, right, right. And, you know, it is some hoes out here. It is. There's some hoes out here for it sure. It is some hoes out here. It's a decent amount. Man. Decent amount of hoes. But it doesn't necessarily mean, like, what they have going on, they're not tapping into what they consider is their divine femininity. Mm-hmm. That's just real shit. Mm-hmm. At the same time, divine femininity is honestly also leading with your pussy. Like... Mm-hmm. As a woman, you know what your instinct, what your gut tells you. This feels good. Uh-huh. This doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? I know a lot of women out there who may be in a situation. You may be in a meeting. You may be trying to make a big decision. And something in you is telling you this don't feel good. This like, uh-huh. this space don't feel good. Or me being on a date with this guy, this don't feel good. Uh-huh. I'm not leading with her in mind. Right. At the same time, as a woman, I know if she feels great, I feel great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel seductive. I feel sexy. I feel confident. You know what I mean? A lot of women out there that are kind of like, I don't want to say miserable. You could could say that. I'll say (laughs) women who don't take care of their coochie, they probably are miserable. (laughs) They are. If you take care of her, She's going to take care of you. Mm. Real shit. That's why people, that's why we like, that's why <laughs> this is a gem. Like real shit though. You know what I mean? And with all due respect, we all grown. You know what right. I'm saying? But like, if you take care of her, she's going to take care of you. She's going to guide you and tell you, this doesn't feel good. Don't go this way. Don't just go this way. Not just sexually, not just centrally, but like physically, mentally, like how you think. You know what I mean? Because at the are end really of the day. Are you really thinking though? Or are you just feeling? Feeling is thinking. You need to read feeling is a secret. This feeling is thinking. Feeling is a part of thinking. You need to read mm. Feeling is a Secret by Neville Goddard. You read that book, ask me that question another time. Because okay. the reason I say this is because imagine this. Okay, so I'm going to take you to a scenario. If you close your eyes right now, right? Mm-hmm. Do you really want me to close my eyes? If you want to. If you if you want to, it's up to you. <laughs> All right, come on, fuck it. Let's do close it. your eyes right now, right? Okay. Okay. So you, you're not in your basement right now. Mm-hmm. You're thinking about March. Uh-huh. Better you're thinking about the top of June. You just got a hundred thousand dollar getaway to Bora Bora. You just received the thing in the mail. You weren't expecting it at all. You don't know how it came, but you just received it in the mail. Uh-huh. Now feel the feeling of what it what what it feels like to get that in the mail. Uh-huh. First thing you're doing is Oh, I'm about to go to Bora Bora. Let me figure some stuff out, right? Now feel the same feeling of you actually being on an island or being on Bora Bora in that country or whatever, on a beach, toes in the sand. You hear the water. Everything is peaceful. The feeling of it, not the idea, the feeling of it. Right? Mm -hmm. As you feel in this, you continue to feel this, you start to feel a little happy. You start to feel quiet. You start to feel peaceful. You start to feel like there are no problems in the world. And you know this because you know you're going to be on that island at peace, just happy. Mm-hmm. Now come back. Open your eyes. You're back in Chicago. You said what? I ain't get no coochie in Bora Bora. We ain't get no coochie. Well, damn, we should have been feeling that. But... What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that feeling, there's a little sliver of a moment where you felt at peace. Did you? It's kind of like a meditation. Yeah. Almost like a meditate. You you felt that peace, right? Yeah. Just a little bit. Now imagine you meditating on that every night before you go to sleep. Uh Just imagine it. 
meditate on that every night before you go to sleep and that feeling, right? Mm-hmm. I guarantee you, maybe not even six months, but then this year, you're going to get some type of ticket or access to a vacation to an island similar to Bora Bora. So you're talking manifesting now? Exactly. But you do it through the feeling of it. People think that you just think about it and it just happens. It's right. not what happens. You have to feel it consistently, especially before you go to sleep. Because what happens is when you go to sleep at night, that's when your conscious meets with your subconscious. Mm-hmm. When they connect, you know what I mean? Whatever that feeling you feel, if I feel like I'm the biggest star in the world every day when I wake up mm-hmm. and then I move like that, and I feel like that when I go to sleep, my conscious is going to start meeting with my subconscious. Mm. At some point, the world around me is going to interact with me as if I'm the biggest star in the world. I agree with that. Uh, I, I look at it as like Newton's law. I never looked at it from that like angle, but I do agree with it. I look at it kind of like Newton's laws of attraction, of, of motion. Of motion. Uh, almost, like right? Every action has an equal opposite reaction. Exactly. So like you have to. Same thing. If I change myself, the world had to interact with me. Same thing. So what's going to end up happening is the more you do that, especially before you go to sleep, I guarantee you, six months. I can't even put a time frame on it. Within a couple months' time, maybe even a couple weeks, something's going to happen for you that aligns with what you felt yourself was. And it could happen positively, it could happen negatively. For example, if you run around the house before you wake up or when you wake up and you stub your foot on the door, mm-hmm. you're like, damn, fuck this fucking door. Oh, this door just pissed me off. Woo, woo, woo. Next thing you know, we come back from work and the door is broken. Mm. Uh, earlier, you was just like, fuck this fucking door. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it happens negatively, it can happen positively. Especially if you're thinking about it all day. It's really on how you feel nah, is what I, I creates your reality. So that goes back into the question of divine femininity. You know what I mean? Like I said, if you take care of her, she's going to take care of you. She's going to guide you to the promised land, honey. Take That's care it. of the pussy. And the pussy going to take care of you. All right, your turn. We got a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we could talk. Um, okay, so let me see. Okay, number two. Okay, what are you standing on in 2024? So if you're standing on business this year, what business are you standing on specifically? Um, the main goals for 2024 are to tour 12 cities. Okay. That's really the biggest goal. That's really like all I kind of give a fuck about. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I ain't really <laughs> focused on nothing else. Uh, and of course, there's things that have to happen for that to fall in place. So it's mm-hmm. like steps. I ain't gonna call them other goals, but it's steps and things that have to happen to to flow into that and make that possible. But that's really it, though. That's what I'm focused on. Okay, come on, tour. Yeah, for sure. Okay, wait, I want to see the tour. What uh, city would you do it? What, what, what cities? Outside of Chicago, what other cities? Like, top name, three. Oh. Uh, off the top, um, I know down. I know I was, so we trying to do eight in the Midwest, and then the ones outside of the Midwest. We looking at Atlanta. We're trying to do Atlanta again. We trying to do Houston, Philly, and Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. I like Philly. To, I think Philly would be nice. We actually going to Philly Saturday. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we actually got show in Orlando. Um, a couple weeks too. Oh, okay. On the twenty sixth or something. 12 cities. I want to see. Let me know which city. Okay, I can slide to. You said Orlando doesn't count? No, nah, Orlando don't count. Uh, Orlando don't count. I mean, it counts. I guess 13 with Orlando. Yeah, it can count. Yeah. Okay, Shout ahead. out to Orlando. <laughs> we ain't going to do Orlando like that. Shout out to Orlando, man. All right. Um, so I know when I, go to, when I go out, when I go to events, mm-hmm. there's different types of DJs that do different types of things, right? Mm-hmm. So I go to R&B got like parties i see like certain djs kind of specialize in like it seems like at least that they specialize in r&b yeah. and some um they're just good at different things i see some of them talk really well like yeah. they they really use their voice to hype up the crowd a lot what's you feel like is your dj and superpower like your main thing my voice okay wait can i so i got, I got a two for one it's my voice and the fact that i dance okay yeah my voice is very particular on the mic. Like, yeah, my voice is just very particular. I, I've noticed that um, 
whenever I DJ, it ends actually what ends up happening. People will invite me out to places, mm-hmm. or they hear me DJing. They hear the music playing, but they know it's me because of my voice. Mm-hmm. They can identify the music, but they know it's me because of my voice. The music's because yeah. like I'm Nigerian. I do a, often. I do a mix of Afro beats into trap music. That's kind of like my thing. Yeah. Afro beats and trap music, um, and hip hop and stuff like that. But like. They hear my voice, they're like, oh, that's no CK. Okay, for sure, for sure. For and sure. then if they see, if I'm like, if I'm like on the stage and it's like a concert or something like that, like the Tiana Taylor show that I did in 2021, over for Tiana Taylor, nobody knew I was doing that show. Mm-hmm. Like nobody. I couldn't tell nobody. I actually found out I was doing it 30, no, an hour before call time. Mm-hmm. So I just got my shit, packed it up and ran mm-hmm. to the, to the uh, Riviera Theater. Nobody knew I was doing that show, but I said I had to set my laptop up and open it and keep it there. I set the laptop up, open it, keep it there. Then people saw my name on the back of the laptop and started texting me. Oh, yeah. shit, you doing a show? Da, da, da. I was like, yeah, I'm doing a show. Yeah. So, but I don't think nobody recognized me for real until they heard my voice mm-hmm. and they saw me dancing. They was like, oh, okay. For sure. It's no CK. So my voice and my dancing, yeah. For sure, for sure. All right. Uh, it's your turn. Okay. Um, okay. So what type of energy do you look for in a significant other slash girlfriend, especially within this year of 2024? You use the word energy a lot. Yeah, that's my thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm pure energy. That's the thing. That's okay. That's the thing. That's the but thing what do you mean by that? Like what kind of energy? What type of energy? For? Like if you got a significant other that you date in. Or a girl, maybe it's a girl that she was dating last year, y'all dating this year, mm-hmm. whatever the situation is. What type of energy are you looking for? What type of things are you looking from her for from her for her to do for you or to support you as a man? Uh I'm looking for her to reciprocate in whatever way that she in a dating phase. Um, just to reciprocate what I'm doing for her in whatever way that she feel comfortable with while she's learning what I like. Cause you're not going to know I'm, <clears throat> I'm not a simple guy. So you're not going to like, just know what to do for me or like, that sounds scary. I'm not a simple guy. I mean, if you don't I mean, know me, real. why would you know what I like? That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Like, yeah. So I don't expect nobody. I think it's weird for niggas to expect a woman to meet them and just know what to do. Like you that simple of a motherfucker. That anybody can just meet you and figure you out. Like, do you feel like most men tell women exactly what they want though? I don't know what most men do. Um, and I well, don't you. Uh, not like right off back. Like I don't have like a list of demands. Like, hey, you need to be doing da 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 da. It's just like over time, I I tell you what I like, and I'm not gonna tell you to do it. I'm gonna see if you pick up on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm into. These are things I like. But again, it come over time. It's no rush on that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But in in the meantime, while you are figuring me out, I do expect you to be reciprocating my energy in whatever your way is. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, I might bring you flowers. You might cook me dinner or something, like, whatever it is. I might, you know, and it don't have to be a tit for tat thing. I might have took you on three, four dates and bought you some flowers and you cooked me dinner. So, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, I ain't keeping score, but it's like, you got to be doing something, though. You can't not be doing nothing. I ain't fucking with you. <laughs> I think that's how we Do you we feel get... like a lot of women, like, do that now? Like, they just don't? Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's men's fault, though, that women do that. Because men don't expect shit. Me, me and I talk to court and pursue. So it's like, it's hard to pursue somebody and also demand of them something. Like, how I'm going to tell you what you need to be doing if I'm chasing you? So it's like, mm. I think niggas put themselves in pursuit mode instead of like, we should be trying to connect with women, not pursue them. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's that's interesting because I agree, mm-hmm. but I also do feel like a lot of men don't know how to be their true masculine self around women. Mm. Transparent, like transparently. Just I, around women or just in general? Well, I'll say around women as far as like the relationship mm-hmm. thing, right? I've I've seen women like just be their most feminine self. And your most feminine self, you're going to submit mm-hmm. to your man, mm-hmm. to a man. You're going to submit. Submissive doesn't mean bending on hand, foot, and knee, but you're going to submit. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna be masculine. A woman is not gonna be masculine and give that masculine tough girl 
rah 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 energy around other real masculine people. When I say real masculine, I'm talking about a real a man. Like if you see me, oh let me let me move this table with you. You just looking at me like you like sit down. Why are you moving the table? I got this. Let me mm-hmm. like a real take charge alpha male type of energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like sometimes a lot of men don't know that in order for a woman to do that, to be submissive, to respond in that way. Cause when a man does that, I, there's no room for me to be masculine. The only thing I can do is be feminine. So as a, fe- what do, what do feminine women do? Oh, do you need anything? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Can I get you anything? Are you hungry? Okay. I was thinking about this. I, I was thinking about getting this for you. Like, let me like rub your shoulders. Like, cause I, there's no room for me to do the masculine heavy work. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So I, I do believe that some men don't know that they need to be a true masculine male around women for them to be that towards mm-hmm. them. Because if not, most women, they just want to be protected. They want to be like, they want to be, they want to be them. Women don't want to be masculine. I don't mm-hmm. care what nobody says. Women don't want to be masculine all the time. They don't care about that. They only do it because they feel like there's nobody else taking on that role around them for them. I.e., if a woman's role, in a sense, is to be feminine, meaning I want to be a, I am a nurturer by, by natural essence. I am a nurturer. You mm. know what I mean? I do mother people, so I'm going to naturally nurture you. That's just off. That's just an instinct, right? A male's, you know. Instinct is to provide and protect. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? I don't want to provide and protect all the time. I can, mm-hmm. but I want a man to do his job around me and provide and protect. This so is refreshing. I can break down and just be like, oh, okay, what do you need? Mm-hmm. Can I take this care of us for you? Need some food? Because you're doing what needs to be done so I can do this. Yeah, that's refreshing to hear because uh, I talk to a lot of women who <laughs> don't feel that way. But A lot of women are hurt. Yeah, I love I, y'all. I love us, but absolutely. Um, um, but I will hurt. say the caveat to to what you're saying is that there's, I think it's true. I think it's take more time. I don't think it's automatic with a lot of women because a lot of mm-hmm. women have been fending for themselves for so long. Mm-hmm. It might have been since they was fourteen, and now yeah. they're thirty three. Yeah, it's been damn near twenty years. So you're not just gonna come around and do X Y. It's gonna take me so long to trust that you're gonna be here and continue to do this because my dad didn't do it that my big brother yeah. there's so many people that were supposed to do it yeah. that i trusted to do it that didn't do it that you coming around doing this for a couple months don't really mean shit to me you gonna have yeah. to like be here for a minute but the thing about it is you know what I'm saying? me being feminine <laughs> no but that's what you mean but the thing like, about it is what, what do you mean it's crazy though like what do you mean like, by that? how like you said you saying it's crazy in a good way, but like, what do you, what, what do you mean? It's it's just like putting a time frame on it. Like she's sitting and waiting. Like it's almost like she she challenging him. Like let me see how long you can keep this up. That's I mean, what it sounds like. It, yeah, I can see how it sounds like that. I don't think it's a malicious thing though. I just think it's probably a, not malicious, but it could be detrimental. I, think, I don't think it's malicious. I think that. But being, I think it's also necessary. Though. I think the thing about it is being feminine in a relationship and being masculine in a relationship should be automatic it mm. shouldn't really be something that okay depending on how long you're going to be around me is going to depend on how how long i do this with you it should be very like okay you're courting me mm-hmm. okay let me get to know you okay you're taking care of these things i'm not talking about bills either mm-hmm. i'm not even talking about that i'm talking about we're dating mm-hmm. you're courting me Flowers, doors, you just all this flowers, shit. doors, or whatever, door and broken, and you know, yeah. if we fucking and we having sex or whatever, you coming over my house for dinner and I'm having a cute little date night, mm-hmm. you know, I cater to you. You had mm-hmm. a long day at work because I'm getting to know you. That's still dating, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm not asking you to pay my bills or pay for these things, or whatever, whatever. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm not asking you to be like, I'm not tricking off you. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and most women, if they want that, they're going to be upfront about it. Mm-hmm. The real ones, they upfront about it. They're not gonna play the, the tip. They're not gonna bend around the bush. Mm-hmm. You're gonna actually approach them like that because you know, like, oh, she she wants some money for real. She wants shit to be taken care of. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And 
I think right now, that thinking about it is a lot of, um, I get what you're saying, but I think on both sides, a lot of trust has been broken. Yeah. And the healing process hasn't worked, hasn't, has maybe started, but not all the way. So people are interacting with each other and not going through a healing process. Yeah. yeah. So it's like 100%. hard. Yeah. And it, and it, I think, you know, that's the reality of it. And we have to like make room for that though in these interactions. Yeah. You, know you got to make room. Like when we talk about like, like I, I say this all the time, I say this on the show numerous times, but a lot of us are coming from broken homes. So like to expect that you're going to run into these men who even know how to be masculine. Like what, what are they learning that at? There's no masculinity academy. Like, no, that's you know real. So, and the thing we, about we thing, all got to have a lot of the uh, thing that I thought with each other. I saw was interesting. I saw this mother on Instagram who was talking about this, and she was like, she her idea of this was that she has four sons. Mm -hmm. It was like three or four sons, and I think the oldest like in his twenties, mm -hmm. and they're all very masculine. I believe she raised them on her own. Mm -hmm. I can't be too sure, so I don't want to be quoted on that. But she is her most feminine around her boys mm -hmm. but her boys tap into that natural instinct and say mom don't pick that up i could carry that for you mm -hmm. what are you doing i pay for the bill so they're mm -hmm. they're learning certain things off the rip you know what i mean they're not being told yeah when you go out with a girl you have to do this i mean you can right. but it's becoming more of a natural instinct because they're being around femininity like i'm pretty sure both of y'all could attest when you're around a very feminine female right it makes you feel comfortable you don't yeah, feel absolutely. like absolutely you gotta have your guard up you don't feel like whoa it's too much and i, I think the dumb thing with that is that she's still just playing her role her one role mm -hmm. and i think a lot of single moms try to play both roles and i think that's what yeah because it's unfortunate because they feel like they need to confuse that but absolutely yeah absolutely. i don't know i think it's your turn it's my turn questions uh let's see what part of djing do you like the least That's a good question. What part of DJing do I like the least? I don't like. <laughs> I don't like when people come up and ask me for song requests. For real? I feel like every DJ will say that though, right? Because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm really, asking for project, bitch. Every you know, time. you care. know what? You know what? It's not even a song request. It be this is one of my biggest pet peeves. I'm okay, sorry. Let's talk about it. Please, for the life of me, for the life of me. If you see me out DJing and you are interested in me and dating me or taking me out, don't ask me to go on no date while I'm in the middle of DJing a party. Okay. Don't do that. Please. I beg of you. Oh my God. Yes. Why well, is weird? What is, what is yes. they going to catch her at? That's the thing. They don't, it's, they it's like, it's like an event. It's just like right then and there. Like yeah. it's so inconvenient. It's just, the thing about it is, Nigga, that's shooting I, your shot. Like, I, it's just shoot your shot. That's sometime. cool. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> shoot your shot. That's cool. But, like, I have had grown men, like, really hit on me. Like, I'm DJing. Yeah, turn up, y'all. Okay, da 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 da. In my ear. Yeah, so when can I take you out? Yeah, woo woo woo. I'm trying to I'm trying to take you out. What you trying to do? Oh yeah, they ain't waiting. What? They ain't even waiting until it's like a lull in the Bro, they not they even they like, ain't got no chill. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of strong. That's strong, bro. But, you see, you see what I'm doing here, bro. That's strong, baby. Just for real. So that's one of my pet peeves. Don't do that. But like, I think my least part my least favorite part of DJing is probably people have whole conversations with me at the booth. In the middle of me DJing. Mm -hmm. If we if we kicking it, we turn up and we Singing and stuff together, that's different. Mm -hmm. But having a whole conversation with me while I'm DJing, I feel like any DJ would be like, bro, this is not the time mm -hmm. right now. So, yeah. For sure, for sure. It's your time. <laughs> Where'd you go to college? Like, yeah, what like what? <laughs> Where you go to college? Hey, what you trying to do after this? <laughs> bro, I don't know yet. Gee, I just started like 10 minutes ago. Let me, let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But now it's so cool. Shout out to y'all. That's all I love. <laughs> um, okay. What is... Let's see. What is one thing... This one thing. <laughs> what is one thing you wish you could understand or change 
about the opposite sex? Mm. Understand or change. Yeah, choose one. Either understand or change. If I could change one thing about the opposite sex, I would. I don't lie. Hmm. If you love us just the way we are, you can just say that. It's cool. I don't love y'all just the way y'all are. Oh, okay. <laughs> but at the same time, you can't change one sex without changing the other. That's the that's how intertwined we are. So that's the fucked All up right. part. That's deep. Because whatever you change about women, it's going to cause a change in men. Yeah, okay. Okay, what about understand? Was one thing you wish you could understand? Mm, I wish I could understand... Uh probably understand women's full range of emotions because you we never really see it mm -hmm. like y'all show us like the tip of the iceberg and we'd be feeling like that'd be a lot but it'd be like way more than that though you know what i'm saying i think you know what's crazy that's true i never even thought about it like that that's true but it's not intentional no i don't think it is it's never i think intentional. it's guarded because if i do something to hurt you you're gonna be guarded i think you being vulnerable well you are being vulnerable to an extent because you're showing me all this like let's say i cheat on you mm -hmm. right You'll show me that you're angry. You'll show me that you're sad. You'll show me that you feel betrayed. You'll show me all these things. You might not show me that your self worth is down there gone, and you don't even know if you look good no more, or you comparing me to the girl that I you comparing yourself to the girl. She, you're not gonna show me that part. But if I knew that, I might never do this shit again. Nice. <laughs> like, like I feel like if men knew how fucked up the shit that we do to y'all is, we might. I'm gonna say might. It's some niggas that's just really sick out of it, but uh, I feel like the first time I I had a conversation, it was years after the shit happened. But the yeah. first time I had a conversation with a woman, she really told me like how shit really went for her, like how her whole self image was fucked up. It was just like, damn, damn, that's strong. that's deep because I remember. Well, I know when I date people, I try to be very transparent as possible. I didn't mm -hmm. learn how to be vulnerable until. A month ago. <laughs> are you sure you got the lesson now back? Like, did you just read the study guide or you did you pass the test or I feel like you just know, guessed? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was just going pressing C all the way down. Um, I didn't really learn how to, I didn't learn what vulnerability I didn't okay, let me be clear. I didn't learn what empathy versus sympathy meant mm. until a month ago. Mm. And I was talking to a male friend of mine that I was uh, really, really close with. Mm -hmm. And you know he was sharing some things about his personal life that you know I was trying to understand. I, and I, you know, this is my homie, so you know we go back and we just I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking I'm being encouraged. So I'm like, oh yeah, you know, you got it. Da da da. That's not what he wanted to hear, mm -hmm. right? And I just I couldn't understand why we was getting into it. You know what I mean? In like an interesting way, it was like I, I think I'm being empathetic and. I'm cheering you on. I'm trying to be positive because as a woman, you're being solution based, right? So you was kind of being the guy in the situation. Yes, and he was kind of being the girl. In a way, you don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. I, but... I said it. You didn't say it. Sorry, bro. But, <laughs> but it's nothing wrong with me and tapping into their feminine energy. It's nothing energy, wrong though. with that. But I was like, I felt so bad because I'm like, you know, I want to be solution based. I want to help find the problem, but I didn't understand that. The important thing to realize about sympathy versus empathy is sympathy. When you try to be so solution based, it's be, it comes off like you don't care. Like, mm. uh, okay, well, that's too bad, but at least you got this. And it could be something like, oh, my, somebody just passed. Mm -hmm. mm, that's okay. At least you got your mom. Mm -hmm. And just like, someone just passed in life. You don't want to hear that. Yeah. For real. You don't want to hear that. No one wants to hear that. You know what I mean? When you're empathetic with somebody, you are more. Like that opens the door for actual connection. Yeah. So if I'm empathetic with you, you tell me, oh man, uh, God forbid. Oh man, something just happened to my homie. I had to go to the hospital. Yeah. Instead of me saying, oh, okay, well, at least you're straight. Yeah. I'd say, oh, thank you for letting me know that. You know, prayers go out to you and yours and let me know if you need anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's kind of like a space of like understanding. Like I understand what that feels like because I also had a friend that had to go to the hospital. Yeah. Because I understand, let me know what you need in this space. If you want to vent, if you want to, you see what I'm saying? So it's two different ways that they're approached. But, and I can't say most women are like that. I know for me, particularly because I do work in a fast lifestyle and I'm 
and I do work a lot around a lot of different type of personalities. I'm thinking solution, solution, solution. Mm -hmm. And to break the barrier and to remember, you got to be more empathetic than sympathetic. Mm -hmm. It's important. So for me, I just realized like, damn, okay. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, the interesting part about that is that like when we talk about masculine and feminine energy, I think that a lot of people, that conversation gets stifled a lot because a lot of people don't understand what that really is. Yeah. They view it in a very surface level like, Feminine energy is for women, masculine energy is for men, and that's not really the case. That's not the case. We both possess yeah. both, and it's just, if you have more feminine energy, mm -hmm. you're a feminine person. Mm -hmm. If you have, exude more masculine energy, you're a masculine person, regardless of what gender you are. But, in my opinion, uh, not in my opinion, but empty is more feminine energy, right? Mm -hmm. I think that there should be a cap on men and their capacity to be empath empathetic. I can see that. Like, I, I don't think that I, men should be super empathetic. This probably going to sound crazy. Don't try to fucking cancel me or do none of that shit because I'm just going to be transparent with you. I don't think that men and women mm -hmm. are the same. We're actually complete opposites. We're complete opposites. But in that, I don't think we're equals. Okay. What I mean by that is, as a male, you know... If you are able to lift, oh my gosh, I want to use this so right. I want to make sure I say this right. When I say this by that is, okay, perfect example. As a male, mm -hmm. I feel like women go through more stuff, right? Or not more stuff, but we go through a lot of things in our life, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like because us being women, we have to be more emotionally strong. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like some men, I feel like men in general are more mentally strong. Mm -hmm. Emotionally strong and mentally strong. They tap in the same frame, but to me, they're not the same, mm -hmm. right? Because I feel like in cases where males are kind of like, you know, if we think about the family, let's just be realistic. We think about the family, you know what I mean? The male is supposed to be the head of the household. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean a woman is not there to be right next to his side, but the male is supposed to be the head of the household. There's this weird conversation about like canceling men and their role as head of the household because of what a few, you know, a few men did in their lives and probably been mistakes or might have been fucked up. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean all men are like that, especially black men. The reality mm -hmm. of it is, males, yes, you're supposed to be the head of the household. You have a role there. Mm -hmm. Because as a woman, not only am I not taking not only am I taking care of the children of this household or keeping the glue together. I'm here to support you and back you on your decisions. You might be confused or, or not confused, but you might be pondering on a decision that you don't know how to make, but because I'm running the house on the children, I can give you different perspective. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? There is a rhythm where this works. But, like, if, we were, if I were to say we're equal, right, it's like, there's some things that men do that women just can't do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just, there's some things that women do that men just can't do. Mm -hmm. And I think that those... We're different. Yeah, we're different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I kind of get sick and tired of like seeing the whole like black male slander. I mean, I don't want to say black male, but the the male slander, it's kind of like, all right, there are some, there are some men that kind of did some fucked up shit. And mm -hmm. fucked it up for a lot of women out there. Yes, I can agree to that. But at some point, we do have to move on. Yeah. And forgive, heal, and make a decision. Are we going to try to rebuild what a family looks like? Or are we going to keep living in this generational thing of trauma, hurt, trauma, hurt, your kids going through it, trauma, hurt, trauma, hurt, and their kids going through it, trauma, hurt, trauma, hurt. Oh, fuck you, fuck you. Mm -hmm. At some point, you got to like, all right, move on. I agree. Yeah. Whose turn is it? I don't know. I told you, look, baby, when I get to talking, mm -hmm. I can get to talking. Whose turn is it, CJ? Is your turn? And then my turn? Okay. So, okay, boom, bada boom. Okay. What's one secret about the industry that you work in that you wish people knew? A secret about podcasting that I wish people knew. Mm -hmm. 
about the industry. So it's podcasting, media, personality that you wish people knew. Um, I wish you gave me this one in advance. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> uh, a secret. Let's, let me just. That you go through. Like. Let me see. You, you a 2023 goalkeeper. <laughs> um, What's a secret that you wish people knew? Um, It's hard to keep teams together. And I understand why now, like for a lot of different reasons. Um, You know, a lot of times we see Dipset fall apart and Rockefeller fall apart mm-hmm. and all these things or like this person like, oh, I got this nigga left me behind. He ain't a real nigga, da, 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 and all this other shit. And um, now in the position I'm in where like we're like building a team and trying to move forward and stuff like that, um, I begin to understand a lot more how things fall apart. You know mm. what I'm saying? And um, I think a lot of it is, for example, we started podcasting, right? And mm-hmm. we decided to build a team and people wanted to help. It was people around who was genuine. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to help. And um, with them being genuine and wanting to help, it's like, okay, is this a business to you or is this a hobby? And you know, right. some people be like, Oh, it's it's, it's a hobby for it's me. Hobby. Like this ain't I'm not getting paid off this. I just I just genuinely like being around. I like helping, da da da. Okay, cool. So we we start moving forward and then we start having success. And then it's like, okay, well, this is really turning into a business and something that can be way bigger and benefit all of us and our kids and everything. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well now it's serious, but you ain't really signed up for that. So it's like, but you've been here from the beginning, uh, okay. and you might not even know how to be serious. So it's like <laughs> crazy. I'll get that though. Now what do you do? Because now if you if everybody not being serious, then this shit not gonna work. But so do I leave this person behind that been here from the beginning because they don't know how to like take this shit to the next level, or do you? You know what I'm saying? What do you do? That's tough. Yeah, that is tough. And that's that's how a lot of shit fall apart. And then it's a friendship level of things and appreciation of like, damn, this person was here from the, this person didn't have to do what they did. They helped out on some genuine shit. But it's like, now we trying to get here. And it's like, you know? But at the same time, when you run a marathon, you don't get the medal unless you finish. finish. Like, you could run 20 it's miles. Like, what it do was you do? 26. Like, I mean, as a business person, you know, as a leader, you kind of have to keep moving forward with or without, but you don't want to. And that's the hard part. So you might you might have somebody around that's like, oh yeah, well shit, I hold the camera, fuck it. Yeah. I travel with you, hold the camera. I go here, here, here with you, hold the camera, da da da. And it's like, damn, this love, nigga. Like this nigga really like not asking for nothing. Like really yeah, just really, want to be here, he just really help with me. But then when shit get bigger, it's like, bro, we need niggas to do more than hold cameras around this bitch now. Like we need you to learn how to do something. So you gotta either be all in or just like. Is is because I'm gonna have to pay either you gonna have to learn to do this. I'm gonna have to pay another nigga to do it, and if I'm paying that nigga to do it, I don't need you to do it at all. Like because I'm paying him, and he know how to do. But would you just end up paying the current person more? More? No, I'm saying that person got to be willing to learn though. I'm not uh, like yeah, okay, now, okay, okay, now, okay. Now we don't need niggas saying. to hold cameras. We need niggas to edit shit. We need mm-hmm. niggas to do this to do that. So if I gotta pay a nigga to do that, well, what are I'm you here for? for? Now you just here. Now you outdated. Mm-hmm. But it's like, but at the same time, it's like you my man's and you was holding that camera for two years and, and then ask for shit. You ain't lying. So it's like, what do you do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't lying. That's a fucked up situation to be in. It's hard because I hate to say it like this, but the reality of it is this is, okay, essentially this is how you know people's intentions for being around. Mm. Some people are really, really good support systems, mm-hmm. and other people are great building blocks. Mm-hmm. Just because they're your support system doesn't necessarily mean they're a good building block. They can support you from the sidelines as you run the race. Yeah, keep going. Mm-hmm. You need water, boom. You need a fan, boom. Great. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean they'll be there from the beginning, training you for that marathon, building mm. you up to get to that finish line. Yeah. I think sometimes when we have people that we truly that's in it for us, ride or die, they want to help, they build, they work, we kind of get lost in the sauce a little bit. And we like, oh, man. All right, cool. They, ooh, they fucking with us. All right, bet. It's, it's good. We about to go up and then deals. You start noticing big deals coming in. And we got this project. We got this project. Woo-woo. And then we start to see 
it's almost like they lose interest a little bit. It's almost like they, not that they don't care, but it's like the excitement isn't there no more. A little bit. So then you start to think like, were you here? Like, what was your intention for here? Because mm -hmm. one thing I started realizing when you're building with teens and working with teens is that if the person is there for a real intention that is almost actually selfish to them, mm -hmm. that actually may be a better benefit than having someone who's like a friend that supports you. Yeah. Because they want it more. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I'm working on Terry Roseland's show, the show about to get a deal with ABC7, late nights, Mm -hmm. And before, we were just great on YouTube. We were just doing good on YouTube. Now we're becoming these big YouTube stars. Mm -hmm. Now it gets broadcasted to be on ABC in LA, late mm -hmm. night show. But I start to realize as it grows, damn, I think I want my own stuff. Yeah. I think there might not be a place for me in that version of Terry Roseland's show. Yeah. So then you got to kind of, that's where you got to reevaluate. Like, all right, what are you here for? What it, What is driving you to be here? If you're just a support system, I appreciate the support. I don't want a support system in this space, mm. in the eternal yeah. space. You can support me like out there. I think it's just one of those things to where like there's no right or wrong. There. Like there's no person. To, we could point the finger at each other all day. But yeah. It's like I did what was best for me and yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and the growth of the situation and you know, it, it's no, you know what I'm saying? I feel like you can't blame somebody for moving forward if that's what they purpose and that's what they when you met this person, they was on this path. Mm -hmm. They gonna they gonna walk that path regardless. But you know, somebody else might have gave so much to that. But it's like if you ain't willing to grow with it, then yeah, it just is what it is. Yeah. So I don't that's know. Deep. It's it's a tough. That's a tough one though. I uh I know two dudes who they kind of had a disagreement. <clears throat> they was doing business, but you know one was bigger than the other. Mm -hmm. He had things going on, so his homie ended up like started to help him and shit. So like five years went by, and I witnessed them arguing. And he was like, man, you bogus as hell. I feel like for the last five years, you've been using me. And his homie was like, nigga, it's been five years. Why haven't you been using me too? Mm. <laughs> like, he that, basically that, told him, like... That's real. Like, he basically yeah. told him, like, why you not trying to benefit off, off me of as me. well? Like, <laughs> like, I'm here. Like, you've been, you been like, helping nigga, me. Like, why you ain't... Oh, bro, I'm trying to do this too. You all ain't right, took, you ain't took because, no opportunity at all. Because, you know, some people are just scared of hearing no. Some people are just scared of hearing the word no. Ah, uh, they today they, they, in their mind they think ah oh, he not gonna he not gonna do it he not gonna I ain't even gonna bring it up because he just he just gonna be by about by himself yeah and I it's, think people get negative it's a lot of words out there that people get negative emotions behind it like yeah. if you use the word using me it's negative when it's not it can be negative it could be very negative but it also also can be positive like mm. it's like what you said like you working with somebody and you have a selfish reason for being here. You're not being selfish or you're not being, you know, shady or nothing like that, mm -hmm. but you're here for a purpose you're here for, for yourself purpose. to benefit in some type yeah. of way. Cause that's you, when you, people are you most... gonna work hard as hell. Yeah, you, you actually gonna work hard as hell. You trying to get it. You trying to get to it. You have a real reason. Doesn't mean you're a selfish person, but you have a selfish reason for being here. That doesn't necessarily harm me. It's really just more of like me, but it, me being here, does not only benefit you, but it benefits me. I'm a priority, right? And I'm still going to do what I need to do for you. But like, that's like me working on a label. Yeah. It benefits me to be here, but I'm benefiting you too because of what I'm delivering here. Yeah, it got to be mutual. Yeah, it got to be mutual. It's, it's the story of Rich Paul, uh, LeBron agent. Oh, yeah. That's kind of like how his story is. Yep. He, he started off just like getting LeBron outfits and shit. And at one point he came to LeBron like, hey, I don't want shit, but those agents and advisors that you got, every time you go to a meeting, just let me sit in on them. Boom. Like, yeah. I'll let me sit in on them. Let me figure that part out. Let, let me use that. I'm doing all this for you. I, you need anything. You need me to run to the store. You need me to go do this and that. That's I'll go real. do that. But let me sit in on the meetings. Cool. And now that nigga the biggest agent. <laughs> He learned, he all learned about everything. the bigger plan because so, everybody he had a selfish kind of a when you go into it. any business with anybody in the back of your mind it's business love is love you do things to love you do things with transparency you do things with god in mind i really live by that do things with god in mind do things in love but in business there are no friends in business mm -hmm. that's that's the purest way to do it because there's no hard feelings there's nothing personal 
-hmm. I don't feel like, oh, I can't do a deal with you because, ooh, ooh. You know, we could handle the business first. And then we could be friends. On the back end, that's cool later. Maybe moving around. Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you start doing that, and it's like you start getting personal attached you start getting your personal feelings attached, and then you start almost slacking yourself out into thinking things that aren't necessarily true. Because yeah. you didn't take the actual business moves to do A, B, C, D, and E. For sure. So. Sure. Business is not an not a easy thing to do all the time, too. Especially in a creative space. I low-key hate doing business, to be honest. <laughs> it's a creative. I think most creatives hate doing business. It's not fun. Yeah. yeah it go against, like, how my brain works. Yeah. Um... Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, as a DJ, do niggas who you date trip over you being in the club all the time? Oh my god. Yeah. They do. <laughs> okay. Crazy, so though. okay. So so so. <laughs> oh Jesus! I'm about to. All right. All right. Let's do this. So. Get on his ass. <laughs> no, no, no. So you know what's so funny. As of recently, I've only dated people who work in music in industry, who like understand music industry. Mm. So whether that's uh I've dated a DJ before, I've dated a songwriter, mm. right? Um, I've dated an artist before, I've dated talent, I've dated, you know, I've dated I've dated all different types of like people who just work in the industry who get mm. it, right? And I don't think it's me being in the club that's the issue the issue is the other niggas that's in the club mm -hmm. and you see a pretty girl she look cute doing her thing talking her shit on the mic woo woo and when i put on a show i put on a show mm -hmm. so i'm talking with my eyes i'm like talking to you mm -hmm. i'm putting on a show i'm dancing i'm doing what it is right and people who find that attractive they'll come to the booth and they hang around the booth Mm -hmm. They'll just hang around the booth because you know it's always cool to hang around the booth with the DJ. It's always you know mm -hmm. that thing, and I think that aspect is what blows people up. They did in the past to be like, "What the fuck? Who the fuck is this in the booth with you?" You know right. what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? I, I'm I, like dating as a DJ is like it's not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. It's kind of like dating an artist. Almost, cause it's it's really you have to really understand. It, it's like a trust thing. It's a trust thing, and then like like people that I date. If if I have a gig and we're dating, and you're free, I'm gonna tell you to come to the gig with me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna invite you. Hey, you wanna come? Slide. Like come into my world and see that. I actually like when my significant other or someone that I'm dating comes to gigs with me. Mm -hmm. I do. I don't need you to be lovey dovey or be all on me. You can't, I mean, it doesn't bother me, but I don't, I don't need you to do that, but come enjoy and be outside with me. The reason that is, is because sometimes something that I have noticed in the club is that when other men see a man around a female DJ for real, they just don't march towards, you know mm. what I mean? And nine times out of 10, if it's a man by that female DJ, if it's that person either on that, on, on her team, mm -hmm. Like management or something like that. So it's protecting her, mm -hmm. right? Or it's probably dating her, right? Or it's a good friend. Mm -hmm. And usually what happens is, like, that person that's there with a the female DJ, especially if it's a male, they're looking like, what the fuck? Well, no, you know this? You know him? Like, it's right. a thing, right? Mm -hmm. So now, men, when they see it, they kind of like, oh, shit, all right. Let me not run up to the booth and, like, try to be all on her. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That might be her man. That might be her best. You, you don't know. So mm -hmm. you start second guessing. It's when she's by herself and there's nobody there. It's like, oh, it feels like, oh, free range. <laughs> like, all right, bet. Ooh. Yeah. So I feel like it's not me that they have the issue with. It's <laughs> them that they have the issue with. For sure. So Understood. that's what it be. Understood. But you know, um... Yeah, it's so funny. Damn, I've never dated nobody that's not in the music industry. I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. Uh, Wasn't a teenager once? People like, what usually, the fuck? People <laughs> usually date people who they work with. Teachers date de teachers and shit. Right, that's okay. Yeah. So I don't feel yeah. bad. Because, you know, I used to hear that, like, <laughs> if you're in one industry, you should date people in other. 
so you can like People see just make different. Shit up. Like that's what I heard, but I just I just <laughs> can't relate. I can't. I just. I mean, I don't think it's nothing wrong with dating somebody in a different industry, but it's like what? I don't think it's nothing wrong with it, but I. It could be my comfort zone. I think it's a comfortability with dating somebody who works in the same industry as me because you get it. Now, I'm not dating you because I need something from you. Let's be clear. I don't need shit from nobody but God. Excuse my language. Mm -hmm. I don't need nothing but nobody from God, right? So I'm not dating you because I need something from you, but I do think there is an understanding there when we are yeah. you know, dating with the same industry. Or like just in the entertainment world, you get it. Like, oh, she's working late night. Okay, she's at the club. For sure. You know what I mean? But I do believe that trust is harder to build for DJs in relationship because you are in these clubs and yeah. you aren't there. You can't see what's going on. It's like hard for podcasters about. too. Yeah. They think I fuck every girl that I'm sitting across from. Well, we not fucking. So. Or on shows. <laughs> <laughs> or on for shows anybody that's dating Terry, we are not fucking. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but um, I, I could get that because it's like your host. It's just like, you know, when you become the big personality and you're on NBC or, you know, doing whatever late night show that is and, you know, doing your thing, it's the same thing. You know, it's an idea. But people don't people don't realize that like as entertainers, we have to put on a um we put on a character. Yeah, you do. Like you put on a show, you put on a character. Like Well, I don't put on a character. But I do In think hindsight that... <laughs> we do. I don't think I do. We do. I don't think I do. We do. And I think maybe we do. I think that's what I like about podcasting the most is that um um I was having this conversation with a woman. Mm -hmm. And it'd be weird when I, I meet women who listen to my podcast or date women who listen to my podcast. They know so much about me already. So I try okay. to tell them like the experience I had. And they'd be like, Yeah, I know. Like yeah, that time that you broke an ankle in third grade, like yeah, like I remember that. Like you <laughs> talked about that, like <laughs> episode seventy three. Like I remember okay, that. so it's kind of like weird because it's kind of like they already kind of like enamored with me. Yeah, they know so much about me, and I know nothing about. So it's like very one sided of mm -hmm. us getting to know each other because you know all this shit already. But then it's like she was comparing it to like if she was to meet like her favorite singer or something. That nigga might have an annoying laugh that she ain't know about. That nigga, his personality might be different than what he she oh, expected. Oh, right, yeah. Because like you only see like, one side of the art. I'm exactly how I am. Like, yeah. Like, you know, so it's kind of like crazy. I get that. All right, all right, all right. Well, I get that. Okay, from that, yes. I feel like with a DJ, like, when I DJ, you get no CK. You get yeah. pure energy. Right now? I like pure energy. You got, you, you ever had like an energy drink deal? That's what, that's what I'm manifesting. I'm trying to get me. That's not, like it just makes sense. That's the thing. It makes yeah, sense, right? It's it makes brand, sense. I look brand branding will get you a fa baby. But that's actually the reason why I have green hair. I have, I'm doing green hair all year. Yeah, I figured that when you first walked through the door. I'm like, <laughs> that's the pure energy. The battery. The battery. That I like the battery emoji too, though. I do too. I use it a lot. Like I, that, that. That's a dope. That's like one of the best emojis. I swear to God, yeah. like anytime I get amped up and it's like the energy, like okay, yeah. and then like when I perform, I'm really high energy. When I talk, I'm really high energy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? The thing with the green hair, it's like different shades of green. Baby, y'all see it. Y'all see it later this year. But mm -hmm. it'll be like different shades of green. Yeah. Because energy, energy comes in different forms. Mm -hmm. So you have seductive energy. You got pure hype energy. You got cool energy. Mm -hmm. You got hype energy. You even got emotional energy. You know what I mean? Sure. It's a little angry and it's different types of energy, but energy is energy. So um you'll get we'll get more into that the next yeah. year. Like, yeah. This is sure. fire. But I appreciate it. Energy deal. I'll do energy drink. It won't be Red Bull though. No, let me not say that. Like Red Bull. But I don't know. It'll be, you know what? I'm vegan now, so I would like to see a vegan energy drink. Okay. Respectfully. Don't look like that. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, you know, like <laughs> I would like to see that. Um, okay, so um, see now we're getting deep because we've been talking. Is there anything that you are currently afraid of? If so, what is it? Mm. And how do you plan to overcome it? What am I currently afraid of? Mm -hmm. Um, the only two things I've ever feared in my adult life is um Death and getting old, which is crazy because it's like it's either one or other. So you can't you be scared of both. Like you're either gonna die or get old. Well, 
Like, I, don't, die and get old, I used yeah. I used to well, you, yeah, you're gonna do both. Well you mm-hmm. don't have to do both. You're definitely gonna die. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to get old. But I remember when I was only scared of getting old, my big cousin used to always be like, Well, there's only one alternative to getting old. Like you gotta die. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> So it's like, that is crazy. It's only one off. I never heard that. Shout out to your <laughs> Shout out yeah. to your cousin, so, your uh, man. Um, the other thing is like death. Even with that, it's a it's a foolish thing to fear because it's the only guarantee. Like it's the, it's the one thing that you know is going to happen. There's literally nothing else in life that you can guarantee is going to happen except that you're going to die. You know, thing and, like this. No, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, death also like when you think about it, it kind of makes life beautiful. It kind of makes life worth anything. It's yeah. the fact that like you know that this moment is not gonna happen again. You know that like when you smell things and you appreciate the way that they smell, it's only because we know that we're ultimately doomed. Like, mm-hmm. right? So it's kind of like if we could live forever, we what would we actually enjoy? We might take life for granted. You you wouldn't have a choice but to take yeah. life for granted because it's it's forever like you it's know just what's there. So funny? Like the biggest thing I am afraid of currently is that I would end up not fulfilling what God had planned for me to do mm-hmm. on this earth, and what I mean by that is not walking in those instructions and that purpose fully. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Deep down, all of us know we're, what we're meant to do. Mm-hmm. But because we don't believe in it sometimes, it almost seems unbelievable. We don't walk in it fully. You know what I mean? And going back to the energy thing, the main reason I actually called myself energy is because one thing I realized in 2023, I realized that God put a particular light into each and every one of us. It's different. But each and every human has a light a shimmering thing which is a piece of god in you Mm -hmm. but people don't realize that people don't realize how dope they are how raw they are because they've been around or their mentality has been fixated on thinking that they're not that Mm -hmm. based on society or whatever is around them i think when people when you truly tap into that light that God put in you, that light is a piece of him, right? Yeah. So tapping into what he put in you, start feeling yourself almost like immaculate, mm-hmm. right? And you start feeling so immaculate that you start like becoming more and more of who you actually are meant to be because you're living in it. It feels like, it feels as natural as breathing. Mm. So I think because of that, um, you know, I think I'm afraid of not living and breathing and fully what God told me that I am on this earth. So the way I plan on overcoming it is just living life each day with as much energy and light as possible and primarily doing everything with love. I feel like people kind of forget that is an important part. Do things with love because yeah. you love it. Yeah, and it's crazy because I feel like I've overcome my fear of death. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because of what you said. Like, I, I think like... If I died today, there's nothing more I could have done, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I I say that because like taking into account, like I used to think taking into account all the things that went wrong in life and be like, damn, I could have been doing this younger. Like I took a four year gap between high school and college, all this shit went wrong, da da da. And when I when I really think about it, it's like I would if I went to college at seventeen, I would have never graduated. Like just looking at who mm-hmm. I was at that age. Mm-hmm. And I look at, you know, um, all the things that I once felt like I wasted my time doing, it all kind of got me ready to do this. Like, the things that I went through, I wouldn't have the, pers- like, all of the bad shit I went through give me th- the perspective to actually have the conversations I have in front of a camera. Like, no, I remember when I was here know, yeah. with one of the other sh- shows you did here, I was like, oh, Terry got a lot of insight. Yeah, so I, I think that, like, I don't want to die, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like, they say on your deathbed, you either gonna say, I wish I had, or I'm glad I did. I don't think I will have any, like, I wish I had. Like, I think I would be cool with it. You'd be cool. So, yeah. like, you would be able to wake up or go to sleep and say, well, if this was the last night, you would wake up, God forbid, this is the last night, you'd wake up and be like, all right, this is it. I, you'd be content and happy with what you accomplished. Of course, you want more. I think but- that 
my funeral for like if I died at seventy, it might be way more people there just because of where I, I know I'm headed. But I think that the things that people have to say will be the same now in fifty years from now. That's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far as like, I think everybody who know me know what I want out of life, and they know that I'm doing everything I can to, to get mm-hmm. it, including my sons. So that's how it kind of matters. I love that. Yeah. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. All right. Uh, let's see. How do you feel about women shooting a shot at men? I did. What? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's not. I think it's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I I I really don't. I feel like if if you like what you see and you want it, go get it. It's different ways to shoot your shot too. You mm. know what I'm saying? I could be transparent, be like, yo, I want to shoot. Mm. What do you want to do? Or, <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> I can't. You right. know what I'm saying? I could be like that. Yeah. I can maybe like be real cute, be like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to Jamaica and I got an extra ticket and I want you to come. Mm-hmm. All right. I could do that. It's a hell of a shot. It's a nice shot. That's it's half. It's half court. <laughs> half court. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And if you saying yeah, I'm. You know, it is what it is. Um. Or, you know, I could play the cat and mouse game with you, flirtatious, and see if you're gonna do it. But regardless, I feel like women actually shoot their shot in different ways all the time. I, I agree. think it's just, um, you know, knowing the type of woman that's in front of you, recognizing. Is she one of those or she's going to be like, oh, yeah. The signals. Yeah, the signals. I think mm-hmm. the signals be the hardest thing for mm-hmm. men to probably figure. I'm very green in that way, though. Like, I don't I don't pick up on... Um, if it's a signal from a stranger, I could pick up on that faster than a, sig- a signal from a woman that I'm already cool with. Like, if we cool and cordial and you're trying to switch it into us dating... I'm not gonna pick up on it unless you say it directly. I'm gonna be looking yeah. like no, that's exactly right. I thought you came over that's, here at five in the morning because exactly you really wanted right. to talk, bitch. Right? That's it. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. I know somebody that um I did that with somebody. You've actually done that a few times. I legit had an ex that I was with for years, like come to my house like two, three days in a row and sit and talk to me till like three in the morning and shit like that. And she just was like, well, nigga, I'm trying somebody? to fuck. Like, <laughs> like, why do you think I can come to your house? I'm just I'm like, to get I to thought it. we was really cool now. I like, what the hear, fuck? I don't want to hear none of this. I'm trying to we get just to have it. some real ass conversations, G. Like, do you feel like, okay, do you like that though? Do you do like, like what? Like when women shoot your shot at you? Like, do you like mm-hmm. it like when it's a little more flirtatious? Like a little more innocent? Or do you like it when it's like transparent? Like, yo, this is what I want. Uh, if I'm attracted to you, I don't give a fuck how you get it done. Like, I don't care how you do it. If you, if I'm not attracted to you, I also don't care how you do it. So I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't mind either way. It's cool. Would you let a woman propose to you? I think women propose to men all the time, but in that subtle way, like we talked about. If you ask me, like, are we going to get married? Do you plan on marrying me? Like, can we get married? Like, you just propose. No, what I'm saying, though, move. if we were dating yeah. for a certain amount of time, if we already had the marriage talk, and I, and I talked to your family members... I get the ring, all that. I'm taking you out. They bring you to a spot, and I put it at the put it out the table. Like I think it's a video out. Someone did this, and I get down on bended knee and say, "Will you marry me?" You gotta get on two knees. Get the fuck. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> but no, but uh, but if as like, would you like? Would you say, and this is someone you love, so you do want to marry them. Right. Would you say yes? Or would your masculinity be like, nah, I ain't going to, like. I'm not going to see my girl. If I if I want to marry her, I'm not going to see her on a knee with a ring and say, no, that's fucking crazy. Like, she's already, like, I ain't going to say humiliate us. She's already humbled herself enough today. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> saying no is just fucking saying, like. So I, I feel what like if I'm you didn't just, want to marry her though? Yeah, it's just a bad. What if it was day. like it was like over? <laughs> so you would say no? If I didn't want to marry her, I'm not. Maybe I would still say yes just to save her the embarrassment if there's people around. If 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 I Damn. didn't want to do it and I saw it coming, I would like try to catch her before she got on one knee. Like, hey, baby, like, uh, <laughs> I don't do that. Like, no, nah, you tripping? That's my job. What is you doing? 
I because you know some women that. feel like they don't want to wait on the man to decide when it's the time. And they yeah. feel like it's time, it's time. I, I just feel some like women, so. women don't know how to like, a lot of women don't know how to switch power dynamics once they shoot they shot, provoke, whatever the case may be. A lot of okay, women yeah. don't know how to like, because they feel like they don't want to be the person that's pursuing a man. But it's very easy for them to switch the power dynamic back. Like, it's, like I don't know. I, I just, I don't know how women lost their seductive capability. I guess it's getting away from that divine feminine that you talked about. That's but exactly what I'm talking women about. Women are like really bad right now at keeping a ball in their court, kind of controlling things on the emotional playing field. Like, I just, I, I just really believe what it is, is that women are, a lot of women are hurt. Mm. A lot of women are healing or have gone through their healing process. Yeah. They forgave, but they haven't forgotten. And a piece of that, it's like when you scratch yourself when you were a kid, mm-hmm. you scratch yourself, right? Maybe you didn't put the Neosporin in the first aid kit on it, mm-hmm. so you have a scar. So it's healed, and you forget about it as you get older, but every mm-hmm. time you look down, oh, it's that scar there from when I scratched myself. Mm-hmm. So I think that, like, it's the aspect of, like, I forgive it, but maybe I haven't forgotten all the way. And healed mm-hmm. all the way to go back to that. Maybe I forgot what that feels like to be divinely feminine to tap into that. And I think that's like Facts. what does it? So. I, I agree. I don't know how many questions we got alone. I feel like who turn is it? Who is it my turn? It's, and I got three piece. Is it my turn? Okay. Um, we're gonna make this one easy. Um would you choose five hundred thousand dollars or sit down with any artist in the world of your choosing? Five hundred thousand dollars. Do you feel like it's uh when people do that thing, do you feel like it's no um what's the word I'm looking for? Do you feel like it's pointless when people do that? Like sitting like, down with an artist or an in or someone that it like in like uh someone that influences them? I think it depends on where they are. Because if you have zero financial literacy or financially literate people around you, then maybe you do need to take that conversation and not fuck up $500,000. Maybe you need to go on an adventure of fucking up $500,000. I think it depends on the individual. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't I don't judge or blame nobody for whatever they, they choose. But, yeah, like I've heard Jay-Z on the interview say, like, nigga, take I would tell money. y'all niggas to take the bread. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I always say like, but time is also one of the most, time is more valuable than money. You know, like you can have somebody, like what's more beneficial, right? Let's say <clears throat> Warren Buffett donates, um, 500 million in Chicago public schools versus Warren Buffett goes to a particular black urban high school and sit with each kid one at a time and give them investment tips. That's that true. Use later, like. What's going was, more what's impact more, yeah, what's a, more impactful? individual child more? Like, that 500 million, yeah, we're going to have some nice schools, some nice-ass computers. we still going to be wild as hell in this bitch. we still mm-hmm. going to tear all this shit up. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, so I think time is more important, you know what I'm saying, um, than donating them big-ass checks and shit. But, like I say, it depends on the individual, you know? For me, I'm taking a break. I'm straight. Like, I don't want to talk to y'all niggas. <laughs> like, That's real shit. Yeah. I can't. I, I'll definitely take the money. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely take the money, but you know what I would do? I would take the money, and if I was able to get access to a particular talent, I would take that talent to dinner and have the conversation. Mm-hmm. If it was one artist that I could, if I had to choose any artist to sit down with and like pick their brain about shit, it would probably be Nipsey Hussle with, because of what I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, before I was doing what I'm doing right now, it would be Kanye West. Kanye West? Yeah. Yeah. I actually would probably, I would do Angela Bassett. Mm. I really, I feel like she's just a woman of wisdom Mm -hmm. has really went through. She'd been in the industry for so long. She'd been in the entertainment industry for so long. And I feel like as a woman in the industry, to see those people who who have like been on top and Mm -hmm. lasted for so long that like, you could tell, you could kind of tell she's like someone that like would give good insight. You know, sure. I'd probably do her. For sure. Um, okay, it's your turn. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Um, 
It's prank call time. So this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna call the nigga that you talk to right now. Hell <laughs> what? Gonna, you're gonna explain to him that he's not hitting it right. And you're gonna have him on speakerphone. We're gonna get his reaction. Oh my God! No, you, you said just down for whatever. That's crazy! Oh my God! Yeah, I gotta do this for real. You're a great communicator, right? Let him down easy. I'm sweating. <laughs> I hope it's not true. I'm sweating, it's but if not it is true, this true. would be a beneficial conversation. But the thing about it is. No, I'm, I'm trying to make this make sense because, like, the thing about it is, I'm not really fucking nobody right now. Okay, Stop the, fucking. The last a nigga. A long time ago. This is the last nigga then. You, what? You, you could just be like, hey, look, I just wanted you to know, um, I was thinking back to what we had going on, and I just kind of wanted to be transparent and straightforward with you about how I felt about it. I got a better idea. You what? ain't had none in a while. You want some from him. But you just need to let him know that he needs to do a better job this time. I like it. What kind of shit is this? Oh my god, I'm sweating. <laughs> who do I call? Is the question. <laughs> Damn, bitch, who do I call, bitch? Who you call? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Are you asking your pussy right now? Yes. Like, <laughs> who you're we talking, calling? You talking to your pussy right now? It's oh crazy. my god, I wasn't prepared for this. Damn, you should. You know what? <laughs> I got. Can we come back to this? I gotta think. Who am I gonna call? We got time. We really don't. We got. That's what I'm saying. We don't get ten. We can end it on a high note. You wanna come back to it? We gonna come back. I gotta think we'll about this. Who am I gonna? Who bitch? Y'all gonna see it on my face? <laughs> who was this bitch gonna <laughs> call? <laughs> Damn. All right, let's do this. Call? Um. Name three things that you're leaving in 2023. Um, like the lady stepping up the stairs. I'm leaving. <laughs> we ain't see that this year. I ain't seen none of yeah, that this year. We, we got to bring that back. We leaving that shit in 2023. <laughs> that stayed up. Every time, every time somebody bring that up, they still stand on that first step. They ain't gone nowhere. Um, okay. I'm leaving fear. I'm leaving rejection. Okay, let me rephrase that. I'm leaving fear of being my full self. I'm leaving... Rejection sounded crazy. You yeah, rejection. Shit, that yeah. Man, you ain't get what I was saying. All right. Oh. <laughs> my God. I'm still thinking about the prank all shit, so you got to chill on me. Um, I'm leaving fear of being my full self. I'm leaving... Um, rejecting who I'm meant to be. Cause sometimes you know who you're meant to be, but you reject it because you, again, scared. Um... And I'm leaving behind trying to control everything. My life isn't mine. My life is God's. Everything I have to this point, God put it here. I did not do it myself. Okay. So me trying to control it to the T makes no sense at all. It's not, it's not going to work. Every time that I try to do that, everything just go down the drain. Yeah. So those three things, fear, Rejection of who I'm meant to be and trying to control everything because God has control. That's it. I'm going to name two things I want to leave in 2023. Okay. Number one, the passport bros. I feel like passport the passport bros? bros need to be left in 2023 because you had to fly across the globe to get some pussy. How do you really feel about yourself? I think that... Oh, that. Oh, that's what you mean. I was like, what the fuck is the passport bros? Yeah, okay. I feel like y'all niggas had to fly. Them niggas be hating women the most. But it's like, nigga, you have to fly across the globe. To Are get you talking about the dudes that like fly women out? No, 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 no. It's, a, it's a group of niggas who they don't have success with black women. So they go fly to other places to sleep with women in other countries like Colombia, Dominican Republic, and things like that. But they try to encourage other men to do it too. And it's like a movement. Like, we the passport. We fuck these black women. We out here with these submissive Asian women out in Thailand and Bangkok and shit like that. And my thing is, like, you had to fly across the globe to get some pussy from a prostitute because you didn't have enough game to fuck a girl you grew up with. And that's sad. 
Yeah, that is tough. Damn, I didn't know that was a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a real thing. And then the other thing I want to leave in 2023 is people telling other people, like, or people trying to um, tell other people what content that they should be making. I see that too much in comment <sighs> sections. Yeah, like, that shit is Oh, annoying. can we can we talk about something else in 2024? Can we talk about this? You're not going to ESPN being like, hey, there's other shit going on in the world. Stop talking about sports. <laughs> like, bitch, go... If you want to hear about whatever the fuck you want to hear about, go on them pages where they we talk about, about that it. shit. That. And I think the real thing is that people are lying to themselves about what they really want to hear about. Because the, al- the algorithm is going to show you yourself. The yeah. algorithm shows you exactly the, what, what you, you want to see. see. If you're seeing a whole bunch of debates about relationships, it's because every time one of them come up, you watch that shit all the way through. You you comment on it. You do whatever you do. And they keep showing you more of that shit because subconsciously, you really like that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So stop lying I to yourself. Like a lot of those things, that, like that's human nature. Like Who doesn't like talking about that? Everybody likes talking about that yeah. to a certain extent. You know what I mean? I think it's kind of... I think what it is true, too, excuse me, is um people got to accept it is. It is what it is. Sometimes... People like to create these false things and they, man, to try to, they don't accept what it is or what it is. Like it is literally what it is. This yeah. is a show about, you know, sex, love, relationships. I think this used to be a podcast about that. It was a podcast about sex, love, relationships or a podcast about dogs eating hot dogs. Then that's what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, accept it for what it is. Nobody make you follow the shade room, spiritual word, neighborhood. You followed all them motherfucking yeah, pages. It's you know what the fuck come with that shit, man. You on that because it's busting. Because, right. you know, everybody like to be entertained. Don't I don't like people to act like they don't like to be entertained. Right. You like to be entertained. It's okay right. to be entertained. It's That's cool. Okay. You can draw the line, but it's okay to be entertained. For sure. Um, okay. I think I have one or two more questions. Um, okay. Do you think in order to be successful, you have to sacrifice some sort of morality. For example, Cat Williams, he was talking about his interview with Shay Shay, and mm. he was talking about how ludicrous, um, in order for him, uh, how he got his like, you know, his deal and stuff like Fast and Furious, you know, he went to whatever Illuminati meeting, whatever they did, and they told him to sacrifice something I, I can't remember everything in detail but they told him to do something for it in mm. order for him to get the money and to be seen as this big star right mm. would you sacrifice your morality to be one of the biggest in the world no no nope um <laughs> and it depends on how you're saying that now but what if they started through like 500 million dollars in your face 200 million dollars in your face what, my morality, like my manhood, like what are we talking about right now? Yes, morality, manhood, like things that's like a morale. So, like, for example, if someone says right now, I will make you, you're going to be as big as Leonardo DiCaprio if you have sex with a man. No. Or if you, whatever, whatever no, the thing it, is, I don't no, know. It's no whatever. price on that. It's certain, like, I feel like it'd be business moves that niggas are making. Somebody be like, oh, you so, like, it'd be like, oh, well, you came up with this group, but they gave you this much to leave them niggas and go do this. But it's like, that money could benefit the niggas that you was just with, too. So it's, it's certain shit, like, but as far as, like, like sacrificing your manhood. I want to say manhood, per se, but it's like, whatever crazy. your morals are. So, yeah. yeah. So, no, 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 no. I wouldn't. Um, and I think it all depends on what your opinion of success is, right? Because if I can't do it my way, it was I, I, it's not success to me. Like I took the elevator, that's not success. I got on the elevator. Like taking the stairs is success for me. Mm-hmm. Like that's my Hard opinion work. of success. Yeah. If I, you know, if our goal is to build this from the ground up, like I take a level of pride in saying that, like I never bought an ad, I never mm. bought a follower, I mm-hmm. never paid to get on somebody's show i never mm-hmm. like everything is 100 percent organic so like i don't give a fuck that i don't have eighty thousand followers right now like i'm grateful for all five thousand of these motherfuckers because yeah. i earned all five thousand of these bitches i never bought an ad i never i never we never did none of that shit like yeah. it's literally all word of mouth and if you if you follow me it's because you like this shit it's not because it was forced on you because i bought an ad and you saw this shit 20 times a day you said fuck it i'm gonna follow you like you know what i'm saying so um but if I can't do it that way, then to me, it's not successful. 
Like, if I spend ten thousand dollars on an ad to promote my shit and it blow up overnight, like that's not how I want to do it. Do you feel like that about some of like your favorite artists? Because there's a lot of artists that do that. I mean, they do it, and this not necessarily their decision, but the labels yeah. do that with their talents. I mean, it's very, it's a very normal thing mm-hmm. for a label to see a talent, want to sign them, and then boom, they put a lot of money into the marketing, i.e., ad dollars, mm-hmm. what people call uh, the robots, mm-hmm. or you know, on the, in the Spotify streams or in the comment mm-hmm. sections. You know what I mean? Do you feel like? You know, if somebody that you appreciate their rap and their musicianship skills, if they, you didn't know they were doing that, but mm-hmm. you find out they're doing that, right? Yeah. But you were a fan of this person. Yeah. Does that change your perspective of like they got successful or? Nah, I'm I'm a big separate the man from the music type person. Okay. Like I like the music. I like the music. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't put because it's like all yeah all these niggas probably didn't did some like you know what I'm saying like. Mm-hmm. I can't sit here and be like, oh well, I don't, I ain't gonna listen to his music because he, whatever, whatever. Because like, mm-hmm. I don't know what this other nigga over here doing. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't care about that shit. As far as an artist and me liking them already. Now, if he on here, you know, like how niggas be saying they independent and then we find out they not. I think that should happen. R.I.P. Dolph. I think that happened to Dolph. Like it be shit like that. So it's like I'm look now. I'm looking at you different because you were saying that and that was part of your brand and part of the shit that you talk about in your music is about being independent and building shit from the ground up and we find out you lying about all this shit, mm-hmm. that would make me look at you different. But if you ain't saying that and it's just, you know, some niggas, yo, you got a machine behind you, it is what it is. The music cool. Keep making the good music. I feel like a lot of niggas like that who get pushed to the forefront in that way don't last. You know what I'm saying? It's real. I feel like uh, the talent that, um, that do that, I feel like, you know what's so funny? I wonder if that's what the identity of what they identify a plant is. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Because sometimes you ever feel like people's music gets just from out the blue, gets like pushed onto you, mm-hmm. but you kind of like don't know where it came from. You just see everybody singing it. So you're like, oh shit, why don't I know this song? Because everybody's singing it. You know, something like, something like that. I feel like um, there is talent out there that I think is beautiful talent you know what i mean i've worked with different songwriters producers you know um when one time i was grateful enough to work with empire i was grateful enough to work with empire but i was really more grateful enough to work with shizzy mm-hmm. who at the time was david O's producer mm-hmm. and together we were able to put a record together for fireboy mm-hmm. dml um who was signed under empire along with happy at empire shout out happy um, and as a team, you know, the, we made, we got a hit record mm-hmm. and, you know, next thing we know, Ed Sheeran's on the record and it's a billboard record. Tell them, the, tell them the record. Cause the record is, is a great record. I love, I love the record. So the record that I worked on with, that I worked on along with my boy Shizzy, um, Magic Fingers, AKA is Peru featuring Ed Sheeran by Fireboy DML. Record came out. The original came out in 2021, mm-hmm. April ish, 2021, and then the remix officially came out Christmas of 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never told anybody. I mean, I have the paperwork, everything to prove the contract and stuff like that. But I actually never did want. I didn't want anybody to know <laughs> that I, I did. Like they're gonna rob you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I okay. So the reason why I didn't <laughs> want to say nothing to nobody was because at the time, I really, really wanted to focus on DJing. Mm-hmm. I really want people to know me as oh, she's a dope DJ. Mm-hmm. I've been doing music publishing since 2018, at mm-hmm. least. That's when I graduated out of college. So when I graduated college, so 2018, mm-hmm. right? I've been doing music publishing since then, and Duran. The same time I did music publishing was the same time I started DJing mm-hmm. for like six years. Okay. Um, yeah. so you have those different things. You have, um, there are different elements of the, of the song producer, songwriter, even the engineer can make a difference between a hit song and regular song, American dream by not American dream, um, location by, um, Khalid, 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 excuse me, I'm saying his name wrong. The emphasis on his voice was actually the engineer. Mm-hmm. It was a piece of the engineer. The engineer actually got a credit mm-hmm. for the record. Most engineers don't get credit. His engineer got credit because he was able to alter his voice in a way that elevated the song, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, with Peru, I was more of the uh, 
map somebody from empire somebody that worked with um my boy happy at empire that introduced us his name is Quayshawn carter um he knew that i was an afrobeat dj and was asking hey do you know any producers i was actually you know what i actually doing publishing right now for one producer his name is shizzy we put it together and we have ooh. overall i'm extremely grateful to god for the opportunity because i learned mm-hmm. how hit records are made yeah i learned like the pieces mm-hmm. of the record how it works I also learned like what it means to actually like do something because you love it mm-hmm. and how to stand on your shit. Because when you're working with labels, you have to stand on your shit. Yo, I was watering so bad right now that when <laughs> when it's time to cut this show, I'm going to cut this one clip and put it at the beginning so niggas could be like, damn, what the fuck? <laughs> she on this motherfucker crying. <laughs> what, did what did he do? Oh my God. I wasn't crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's so funny. Um... When I was at water. I was like, <gasps> breathe in. Brought out. It's okay. I'm a real bitch. You can see a real bitch cry. It's cool. Congratulations to the both of you being uh, goalkeepers. Oh. Being go- having goalkeeper, being goalkeeper award. Is, is that Hockey what it's for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when you see stuff like that, or you know, you kind of get light shined on you for your achievements and what you have going on. Do you feel any pressure, or do you feel like uh, you know now you now you got you got to come even harder, or does it just you know it's just a regular day at the office? Like you was gonna, you know, you you was gonna do your thing anyway. I don't feel no pressure. I don't feel no pressure. I kind of feel like um, I feel like the the marathon continues. And where's the Nipsey? Like you just keep going. Um, it feels good mm-hmm. to be recognized. Yeah, right to be appreciated. Because mm-hmm. that's something that when you're working hard and you keep going, you, you realize that like you're working so fast, you don't get to stop and smell the roses for yourself sometimes. So mm-hmm. for someone to give you the roses and say, hey, you know, you should smell these. It's mm-hmm. like, okay. It's, yeah. it's a nice feeling. For sure. Um, I definitely feel like it actually is kind of like a checkpoint. So you hit the bar, boom, you're here. So now you know that by this time next year, you can't be at the same place. You need to be higher. Mm-hmm. So the ball continues, but now you know, okay, it's time to go harder. Now it's time to push. Like, it was already time to push before, but now people are seeing you right here. So mm-hmm. now it was like, all right, keep going. But now you got to push it up because this time next year, you can't be here still. You just need to be like up here or wherever you plan on being. Mm-hmm. If I'm back here, the same place I was next year, then I didn't do my job as a goalkeeper. I should never got that award. That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, like as a podcaster, as a DJ, we we have fun with you know our fans and supporters and all that stuff. But we connect with the community. But we actually have a responsibility to the art and the craft that we do. Yeah, and I think that people don't realize the amount of responsibility. Like it's a lot of girls that want to be DJs, and I love it. I think that's dope. I appreciate it. Right, get into the space, but. We have a big responsibility, not only to ourselves, but to the culture. You know what I'm saying? And the responsibility is like full transparency. Like, there's a certain level it takes to be a certain DJ. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about quality of DJing. I'm talking about you have to be fearless. You got to be willing to take risks and do things that everybody else isn't doing. Like your show, you take risks. Because clearly, I couldn't have nobody I was going to (laughs) call. Fuck with y'all. <laughs> but honestly, baby, this is my little black book. I can't really do that. Um, you didn't want that nigga voice. <laughs> nah, y'all. Yeah, that's really what it is. It, I don't want that nigga voice. I ain't going to put him out like that. You know what I'm saying? But, like. We got to get the little voice alternated thing. Yeah. It, there we go. That I would do it like that. But at any rate, we the have undercover cop shit from First 48. Like. Hell yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, I could just, you know. But we have a certain responsibility. You know what I mean? You do. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a great platform here where you're advancing. People feel comfortable on this show. The quality of the studio. It's not like no rinky-dink setup. Not mm-hmm. to say people have rinky-dink setups, but you know what I'm saying? It's a quality. It's an essence. You know what I mean? There's a way that you do these things, and now the level's being brought up. People are looking at you to see, look at you at the standard because mm-hmm. you're being recognized. Yeah. People are looking at things that I do as a standard or a way to do things. So now it's time to take it up a notch because there's going to be another Terry Roseland. There's mm-hmm. going to be another girl who's like no CK. Mm-hmm. It can't be.
be you, but they're going to see you. They're going to be inspired by you. They're going to start doing similar things. So you have to keep the bar raising up. That's how the culture keeps raising up. Yeah. It only stays mediocre and irrelevant where everybody's just kind of like, we're just doing it, just do it. Just, you know? Yeah. And they don't really look at the responsibility of the culture, which is like transparency, what we're doing here. Build a community, what we're doing here. Accepting people for who they are, what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? In the music culture, you know what I mean? Music culture is quality. Quality, what we're doing here. Music mm-hmm. culture, what we're doing like with the music. You know, good skill set, good technique. You know what I mean? I'm not just a DJ that just talks shit on the mic and just plays push buttons. Yeah. I actually put on a show. I actually for entertain. Sure. So I think and I think it's important for me to show that so that other DJs, when they see, damn, they see no CK, they like, damn, no CK, she is a true entertainer. And that's why she's one of the best. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, for me. I like recognition, you know what I'm saying? Um, it feels good for somebody to to recognize you. I think that, it's funny, I just had a conversation with somebody who was talking about like social media and attention and stuff. And mm-hmm. it was like, well, everybody on social media wants some type of attention because why would you, why else would you post something for the whole world to see? I was explaining to them, like it's the difference between like attention and recognition. Like attention is look at me and recognition is like, look what I've done. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, I appreciate recognition. Um, I don't really have the same outlook as far as like, you know, growth or as far as like uh, reaching different levels. Like my my whole focus is like on the actual audience, which is interesting. You know what I'm saying? Um, Like the recognition I get in the DMs from somebody saying like, hey, this, like I needed to hear this, like this really meant something to me or when we go out to New York and there's people flying in from different places to to meet us and, mm-hmm. and like, yeah. hey, like this shit really like, I listened to like every episode, this shit got me through this, it got me through that, I got in therapy, I did this. You know what I'm saying? Like so many niggas reach out to me like, bro, I got in therapy because of this episode. Like that's the shit that, like if I could keep doing that, like, uh-huh. I mean the goalkeeper stuff is, is great. You know what I'm saying? That's dope on a media level or whatever uh-huh. like that. But like, it's really the audience, like, like you know what I'm saying? Because it's really serving a purpose, and that's the shit that like really keeps the engine running. Is that like it's somebody who kind of count on it? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I fuck with that. I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, goalkeeper. For sure. All y'all niggas that be in the comments talking shit, like, why don't you talk about some other than sex? It's like, nigga, we be having real conversations. Fuck y'all niggas. Real deep conversations. Yeah. <laughs> and prank calls. You know what? Next <laughs> time y'all do that with me, y'all gonna have to tell me in advance so at least I can have somebody in my mind. Or give me another call to do. Give me yeah. options. I might have to I might have to find another call another call for you next time. Yeah. Give me options. But, that was a good one though. That was a good one. I did one. not know he was gonna go there. I even I was like, I was Damn. A good one. And I was like, I don't even have this person number no more. And I could do it to a random like one of my homies, but like <laughs> I don't know if it would work. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on somebody else and see. Somebody, I'm gonna get somebody with that one sooner or later. No, you gonna get somebody with that one. That's gonna be good. I kind of wanted to do it, but I couldn't, think of, <laughs> I couldn't think of nobody. But let the people know where to find you at. All right. So, like I said, my name is No CK the DJ, and you can find me as No CK Energy on Instagram at N O S I K E N R G. Um, also follow me on uh, X. Same thing. Go to my website, N-O-C-K-I-N-O-S-I-K-E-N-R-G.com. Um, and just stay tuned. I got a lot of interesting stuff coming up this year. I can tell you really you really do business for real because you call Twitter X. I've never heard nobody call it X. Bro. You you you, 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 <laughs> you know you know what's nah, crazy? I had to think about it. I was about to say Twitter, but I was like, oh, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X. Yeah, it's still Twitter.com, which is weird. It's still Twitter.com because it's Twitter. Yeah. Like, like, I, okay, nigga, make a tweet. Why did you change the name, nigga? Like, why did you change the I name? I think he just was mad. He was just mad. Yeah, that ass nigga. He was just mad and, you know, mad niggas do crazy shit. Mad niggas do crazy ass shit. Mad niggas do do crazy shit. Yeah, for sure. That's why niggas got to stay calm. But um, to my people, right now, we in Orlando two weekends from now. Um, So if you in Orlando, you listening right now, make sure you come check us out. We'll be uh, performing at PodFest. Also teaching some classes at PodFest, too, so. 
Make sure y'all check that out. Get on the dates. It's also the five year anniversary of FC Network. Y'all probably can't see that, but FC Network okay. and um, we celebrating that in Orlando at Podfest because it's the ten year anniversary of Podfest. So. If you in Orlando, come out, fuck with us, man. Um, we'll Dates. be in Philly this weekend. So if you in Philly, I'll be at the the Wallow and Charlemagne conference. And I'll also be recording a bunch of shows. So if you fuck with me, you in Philly, man, hit me up. Slide. See, Giving I'm them the actual dates. The dates for Philly? And for Philly and Orlando. Uh, For Philly, the date is, what's Saturday? The 13th, uh, January 13th. For Orlando, we'll be in Orlando January 25th through the 28th for that whole weekend. We out there kicking it and all that. And we all getting matching tattoos. Don't ask me what we getting. They can go get hearts on their hands. Like this. You know, you get the hearts and stuff on your hand with your homie and stuff, like your best friend. You ain't never seen that? Niggas doing that? Niggas is doing that. We ain't them type of niggas. 